Hello, my name is Adnan. I'm the coordinator of Indonesia Corruption Watch, leading anti-corruption watchdog NGO based in Jakarta, Indonesia. I did a research on the government spending on digital activities and the implication for anti-corruption and democracy in Indonesia. The question is why we did this research. Social media doesn't have fact filtering mechanism as the official mass media has. In the case of Indonesia, influencers being used by the governments to shape a political narrative. Meanwhile, a sound public policy making process always presupposes a two-way communication between the public and the government without the role of influencers. And what ICW did in order to dig the information, we browse a procurement website to gather some information at the ministry's office, at the Indonesian Attorney General Office, and the Indonesian National Police that we conducted on August 14 to August 18, 2020. We use keywords in order to find some information. We use clues like social media, influencers, key opinion leaders, communications, and YouTube. And the graph on the screen describes how the government spend the money for social media activities. The government use money for social media, for influencers, for key opinion leader, for online campaign, for digital campaign, etc. And from that research, we find two key points. The central government's uh, total budget for digital activities reached about 1.29 trillion rupiah and has increased starting from 2014 to 2020. And the government also works closely with top influencers in Indonesia for various campaign topics. And they are also being used to shape public opinion on political narrative. For example, in the case of the revision of Corruption Eradication Commission law, there is one example that top influencers in Indonesia, Denis Siregar, stated that in law enforcement agencies in Corruption Eradication Commission, there is a group of Taliban. And because of this, public believe that the Corruption Eradication Commission law need to be revised, even though the performance of this Corruption Eradication Commission is already great in terms of performance. And what are actually the implications for this phenomenon? The first one is that we found inadequate and lack of mechanism for accountability and transparency of large public spending, especially on digital activities that has created an opportunity for corruption, and the tendency of using influencers to set some political narrative of current governments. And for 2024 general election, Indonesia still will shape by the massive use of social media activities by the influencers, by key opinion leaders, and in some degrees, they can also determine the winner of the election. I hope that this study can inspire other countries to do the same research in order to prevent the harmful of social media in political arena. Thank you.